Free to Play se trasladó a la ciudad de San Francisco gracias a Ubisoft Latinoamérica para conocer todo lo que se viene sobre el nuevo Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Let's go, be sure to Después de haber recorrido la ciudad de San Francisco, ya nos encontramos en el Assassin's Creed Odyssey Preview Event gracias a la gente de Ubisoft. Y si ustedes quieren saber todo lo que sucedió, quédense en esta nota aquí en Free to Play. So we felt like this was a, a natural continuation of the transformation that Assassin's Creed has gone through over a long period of time, uh, uh, especially with the, last year with Assassin's Creed Origin, pushing more into RPG. And so for us, we wanted to fully take that into the DNA of what the brand was and transform Assassin's Creed into this uh, great open world RPG focused around choice. We felt like it would give players a better experience, a way to really make Uh, history, their own playground, and to challenge uh, the world that existed, you know, 2,500 years ago, really dig into it much more deeply than they have in the past. Uh, I think learning about uh, ancient Greece was was super interesting, uh, but then it's a challenge, of course, to to bring that to life, to give that something that's uh, relatable to players, uh, especially like when we visited Greece, and you can see that most of the uh, most of the structures of that time have been destroyed over those 2000 years so recreating what this world was and how people acted even the way that they spoke uh, no one speaks the version of greek that they spoke uh, 2500 years ago so we had to uh, investigate that work with people uh, uh, to see how it would have sounded what words they would have used so trying to create this this uh, place for players to explore this beautiful setting Uh, great location, all these historical characters, and creating uh, a universe that's believable, but that's also following that Assassin's Creed lore of the first civilization and these uh, shadowy organizations and chaos versus order and all of that, and putting it into a cohesive experience was our biggest challenge. So uh, Ubisoft Quebec's first uh, full Assassin's Creed was Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and there we had Jacob and Evie. So I think for us on uh, Odyssey, we really wanted to continue that and expand that even further by giving players not just the choice to switch between the two, but to give them uh, a full game with either one of them of their choice. We want to bring as many people into the franchise as possible because we think it's a, a great game and uh, something that everyone will want to experience. So giving the players the choice to create their own story, to feel like that character is their own and not just someone else's character's creation, they're creating, they're helping us create uh, uh, Cassandra and Alexios beyond just what we start with to something that they can feel like you know all of those choices were choices that they made themselves and where that character ends is their own version of Cassandra or Alexios. Sure, so with choice being at the core of what we wanted to do with the game, giving the player these five pieces of gear to allow them to really customize their, their look and their experience. Uh, in addition to that, we wanted to give them abilities that allow them to customize their, their combat, their uh, stealth gameplay, or their ranger gameplay. So if you want to focus on one or the other, you have an, a full set of abilities that you can purchase with skill points, and then you can map them where you want them on the controller. And then you, in fight, you earn adrenaline and you use abilities. So we wanted to have uh, a similar, we wanted to have a really uh, um, expressive form of combat, very aggressive and let the players sort of choose the way they want to play so that not everyone is buying the same skills and ends up with the same sort of play style uh, and that everyone can sort of make it their own and choose how they want to engage in that combat. So for instance, something like Rush Assassinate where you can Uh, throw the spear of Leonidas and assassinate multiple enemies at a time. Or on the warrior side, you've got something like Sparta Kick, where you can kick enemies off of cliffs. Um, and then with the with the ranger, you've got really devastating, uh, uh, strong ranger attacks, as well as the predator arrow, which you can guide to your target. 
Well, I think one of the cool things is that uh, with this project, what we set out to do three years ago is what we've delivered. So the major pillars of uh, focusing on RPG, on choice, on naval, and on uh, 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 all of this customization you have in your gear and your weapons and uh, your abilities and all that were what we wanted to do. And I think we've really delivered on it uh, extremely well. Uh, so I think it's uh, pushing Assassin's Creed in a great new direction and making it a game that uh, players will want to play for hundreds of hours. Okay, hey everybody on Free to Play, please try Assassin's Creed Odyssey out on October 5th. You're really going to love it. Acabamos de salir del gameplay, bueno la verdad es que podemos seguir jugando, pero les quería contar que está maravilloso, realmente la elección, los personajes, la historia, eh, la toma de decisiones, las mecánicas de juego están muy muy entretenidas, así que nada, los dejo muy invitados a que ya a partir del 5 de octubre puedan adquirir este nuevo Assassin's Creed para que lo jueguen porque les va a encantar. Well, it's super fascinating working on an Assassin's Creed game because, you know, you get a moment in history and um, there's so many stories to tell. And we were, we were really fortunate. We have a historian that is on our development team um, and she has a, she's fantastic for one. And she's got connections to um, historians all over the world um, that have helped and contributed to this project as well. Um, so she does a lot of research with a bunch of different people. And then uh, us on the writing team, we also do our own uh, research uh, to make sure that you know we're we're seeing as much of the picture as we can we're getting to know the characters as as much as we can um, one of the things about having an interactive dialogue system is um, you have to know these characters inside and out because you have to write multiple variations of, of who they are and how they act towards you um, based on their personality based on how you interact with them um, so you have to do like an exponential amount of research in order to do that and it's the best thing I'm a huge history nerd, so it makes for good stuff. I think in terms of writing historical characters, a lot of them do the work themselves. Like, if we can find a good amount of historical research on a character like, let's say, Socrates, um, we have a lot of works by Plato um, and, and some other accounts of who this person was and how this person interacted with the world around them. And the coolest part about it is a lot of people are very eccentric and very cool and very weird and they have the craziest stories and we're like we want to use that when it comes to fictional characters we look at aspects of the Greek world that we can't hit through historical characters or the ones that we really want to bring out um, so you know again there's great stories that are involved with that and we're like oh no, nobody touches this and we want it we want to be able to tell that story so it's a lot of fun well, there's a lot of people that have a, a say in what uh, historical setting that we do choose. Um, but for us, it was very inspiring because, um, you know, we wanted to integrate choice. We wanted to make new steps for the franchise. And it made a lot of sense to have it take place in a world that is full of contrast, has a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, we have a lot of historical documentation, but not on everything. And so this is also a great world to kind of flex your creativity muscles and say, like, how could all of this? fit in um, and you know personally um, I've done a lot of studies in uh, literature and theater and so much of the background is from ancient Greece so it's a bit of a dream come true when it comes to narrative because choice is at the center of everything it made a lot of sense for us to say okay you have a choice of the character that you're going to play like if we're gonna have you making choices this whole time but you don't get to choose like it doesn't make a lot of sense so we were like alright you get to choose um, when we were creating Cassandra um, and Alexios we wanted them to be the same character we didn't want just because you chose a certain gender that you'd have um, a, a different experience we wanted you to have the experience of that character you know and I was talking about earlier how we wanted to create a character with a base personality, somebody who's you know emotional, short-tempered, passionate, um, and this applies to any person, no, no matter what their gender is. And so when we were setting up to make Cassandra um, and Alexios, we knew they were going to be the same character, and it made a lot of sense because our fantasy is the mercenary that. 
um, both of these characters are very strong people. Um, and when it comes to Cassandra, we didn't want to let that slide. We wanted to make sure that she was a very strong, um, capable warrior um, first and that that very much dictates her personality, her character, and the decisions that she's going to be making. And um, that is the same for Lexidos. For sure, and we set out to make these Assassin's Creed games with things that will help you learn more about these cultures. Like, we do so much research into who these people are, how they lived, um, what is so important about the culture that they exist in, that it is very educational. I think sometimes where people um, can't uh, dissociate the two is that, you know, it is educational, but it is a game. So we still want you to have fun. And we want you to be able to explore things uh, in a, a fun and interesting way as well. Sometimes that means that history is the perfect fit. And sometimes that means we're going to have to stretch those boundaries a little bit. But I think, you know, if you look at, like, let's say our Gamescom demo and you're like, well, Medusa was a mythical creature and she does, she's not actually historically accurate, home spoiler, uh, <laughs> that you can, you can find that line of what is real and what isn't, and um, it's fairly easy, uh, in my perspective anyway. Uh, and uh, that, yeah, these games are super educational, there's easter eggs everywhere, there's, there's information tidbits everywhere. These characters, um, like I said, are from these huge um, banks of history, and they basically write themselves, like they, they were like that, and we're like, yeah. we're happy to go along for the ride. Yeah. Hey Free to Play, thanks so much for joining us, don't forget to pick up Assassin's Creed Odyssey on October 5th. Francisco. Desde el centro de la ciudad de San Francisco ya nos estamos despidiendo de esta tremenda aventura gracias a la gente de Ubisoft. Estuvimos recorriendo, estuvimos conociendo el juego, jugamos muchísimo, se los tengo que decir, y lo pasamos increíble. Así que nosotros decimos adiós y nosotros nos vemos allá en el estudio.